Thank you so much. And thank you all for being here today. Certainly a pleasure for me to be here and to work with my dear, dear, dear friends at Preferred Travel. They are rock stars. Why? Because they're so experienced and knowledgeable that they're gonna steer you in the right direction no matter what kind of travel that you do. They know the answers and if they don't know the answers that are gonna get them and they're gonna treat you like you should be treated. So by all means, you are in good hands when you book with Preferred Travel. So today I thought I would talk a little bit about North America, um, about what we're doing at the moment uh, coming out of this pandemic and then also on what's new. So it, when you travel on TELC, when we're arranging a new itinerary, we're always thinking of the best possible way for you to see every single part of that destination. This is an example. We have an itinerary called Spirit of the Desert and it starts off with seeing the Arches National Park. But instead of just seeing it like most people do any hour of the day, we go in right before the sun comes up. We take you in and it's dark and you see the twinkling stars and there's nobody else around and all you hear is silence. And then all of a sudden you see this golden ball that starts to rise and the hues on the stones change colors and it's magnificent. And it's a moment in time that you want to capture because you're always gonna remember how you felt just being there, seeing this with nobody else around but the few people that you're with on the tow trip. We bring a picnic breakfast out to you and you think, wow, I was so glad I got up at some crazy hour of the morning to witness that. We're not traditionally usually crazy hours of the morning, but we didn't want you to miss this something this spectacular. Every TAUC journey has a TAUC director who's somebody that's trained and knowledgeable and somebody who's truly going to teach you about the destination. They uh, do two complete training tours. I was a tour director for about a decade, the first decade that I worked for TAUC. So I did a lot of different itineraries, but for every new one, I shadowed somebody who had been running that trip for a very long time and I learned all the logistics, how much walking there was, where to buy tickets, where the motor coach should park everything. So even my first trip would go smoothly, but I was assigned usually that same destination for a good portion of the season. For example, I used to do a trip called the week in France, which would start in Nice and finish in Paris. And every time I get done with my guests in Paris, I get on a plane and I fly back to Nice. And as soon as I'd arrive, voila, my new group would be there and we'd go again. And by the time I got to Paris, I'd do it again. So, you know, this translated into the fact that I learned more every single time I went back. I made friends with the people in the restaurants and in the hotels. If my guests had any dietary concerns, it was easy for me to get what they needed because I was friends with these people and they were always going to help me out. And I think about this and I think about, you know, other companies and their brochures say, you know, they have the best tour managers and, and whatever, you know, it's really not apples to apples because I don't think there's another company that invests what we do in training our tour directors. For example, I have a friend that works for a company um, and she did a national park tour last fall. She hadn't been to any of the places that she, she went to, none, but she was leading a group. So she relied on local guides, but she couldn't even answer questions like where there was an ATM or where the bathrooms were. I can still tell you to this day where every bathroom between Nice and Paris is. So think about that. Um, on a tow trip also, something that I really want you to think about is the fact that the sightseeing is always included. And it's not just about the price, it's about taking you out of the moment. We want you to be free and engaged in the destination so you don't have to think of extra things. And with us, when you book it, you go to see our friends at Preferred Travel. I say take the Band-Aid off quickly, hand over your credit card and voila, you're paid for. We're not selling you anything when you're there. The hotels that we choose are always known for their location and then the quality within the location. So here's some great examples within North America, the Chateau Frontenac, great Fairmont Hotel in Quebec City. This is the Willard Hotel, fabulous location, Washington DC. It's where Martin Luther King wrote his I Got a Dream speech. And it's also where the term lobbyist was coined. So it's got a lot of history as well as it is a wonderful location and great hotel. 
right here, one of my favorite hotels on the Cape Cod tour is the Chatham Wayside Inn. Right downtown, Main Street Chatham, feels like a quaint New England inn. When you're traveling with us, we wanna take care of all the details, all the logistics. So again, you're free and in the moment. What does that mean? That means you're gonna get a transfer, pick up, regardless of how you get there. You don't have to book the air through us if you don't want to. Uh, we just need to know your schedule. We'll pick you up and we'll take you back to the airport when the trip is over. Luggage, you don't have to worry about that. It'll be in your room, it'll be in your next room, it'll be in your next room to make it nice and easy for everybody. Uh, meals. We know some of our guests really like to eat. And so we like to offer lots of lots of choices. When it's dinner time, it's up to you to decide if you'd like to join others or not, and what you'd like to eat. So most of the time you get the entire menu, you can choose anything that you'd like to. That Cape Cod tour that I was mentioning, uh, that I used to run that as a tour director. And we would have lobster, I don't know, on it seemed like on every menu, when I took my guest back to Logan, I don't know, it seemed like every single trip, somebody would say to me, too much lobster. Why? Because they could have it. It was on the menu. It was not, it was easy. We're always looking, as I mentioned, for the best way to show you a destination. So here's some examples. We have a Philadelphia to Washington DC itinerary, great American history. We go to the National Archives, but the way we take you there is we go in before it opens. We have exclusive access, which means we get to see those original documents, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. And it's just great to be able to do that because you don't have people behind you in line hurrying you along. If you came with us on our Hidden Gems of New England trip, we're gonna take you into Ken Burns's private studios. It's not open to the public, but we get the access to go in there because he partners with us. And I'll mention that in just a minute. Uh, if you come with us to New Mexico, I love this trip. One of the things is we get to go into the George O'Keefe Museum. Again, before it opens, we'll have, we might have 35 people in the group, but we'll split into two small groups with two docents so everybody can engage and ask questions and see and hear. And again, there's not a long line of people in front of you or behind you. It's just us. If you come with us to Alaska or to the Canadian Rockies, we have float plane rides and flight seeing that are included in the price because we feel that these are important components of an itinerary and you shouldn't miss out. These are the things that you really need to do. We like to engage you up on Cape Cod. We take you out on a whale watch. And I've never done this trip. I probably did this trip 50 times as a tour director where my guests didn't see whales and they were so excited because they're so up close. Out in Yellowstone, we have a trip called the American Safari, going out there, seeing the animals so up close. You know, it feels like almost like you're in Africa or going into the breakers in Newport, Rhode Island. We get there before it opens. Again, we split the group into two small groups. Two docents will come out and take our guests. And when my guests used to come out of that property and they'd see all this, all these people waiting in line to get in, they thought, wow, it was so nice that we didn't have to wait in line. They kind of thought it was magical. Not really, we planned this, but anyway. <laughs> Talk is a family run company. We've been in business since 1925. Why do I mention that it's a family run company? Because I want you to know that when we're making decisions, it's not a bunch of people, investors sitting around a boardroom thinking about how much the stock price is going to fluctuate if we make this decision or that decision. We have a family who has a reputation that they are definitely intent on keeping up, then they've had this wonderful reputation for the past 96 years. If you were to come up to our office in Connecticut, TAUC is spelled out like an acronym. T is trust and A is always do the right thing. That's really been our driving force since day one. Profit has never been number one. For us, it's always about providing the best available quality and value because if we know we do that, our guests will come home and then they might tell their friends, their neighbors, their travel professionals about this fabulous trip that they had and then they'll wanna travel. In fact, that's how we've grown since 1925. We have our great partners like the, our friends at Preferred Travel that say, you know, 
what you're going to expect on a talc trip. You take it and then you tell people about it because it's a way where you can travel with ease, be in the moment, have an upscale experience and get to do things that you can't do anywhere else. We don't advertise. We, we feel that if we spent the millions of dollars on advertising that a lot of the other companies do, you'd miss something. You wouldn't get so much out of the experience. We feel if we put that into the experience, then you're gonna get a better experience and you'll do the advertising for us. And it's worked with us for since 1925. So thinking about traveling today, and I mentioned today specifically because we are running a couple trips uh, in March and April. We're running our Charleston, Savannah and our New Orleans and Mississippi itineraries. Um, and I mentioned today specifically because over the past year, our friends at Preferred, Tauk, all the travel companies out there know how much this situation has changed because we're ready to go and then we can't. But we all have looked at this and our commitment to keeping you as safe as we possibly can is our first and foremost priority. So on every new trip, if you're gonna travel with us within the next few months, the Travel Well Pledge is something you'll become familiar with. You'll get it when you get your documents. You'll, and when you start on the tour, you will, the very first day when you meet the tour director, you're gonna sign something. What is the Travel Well Pledge? It's basically a pledge to say, I'm responsible and respectful. I am joining a group and for the greater good of everybody, I will do what's asked of me on this trip whether it be when the tour director says, you will sit here on the motor coach and you will sit here on the motor coach. So everybody's six feet apart. Whether it says we're all wearing masks for the duration of the trip or whether it be in a certain place or we have to social distance or no matter what it is, you will adhere to whatever it is that they ask you to do within the protocols. And um, it's, it's to alleviate anybody's getting there and saying, oh, nobody told me about this. You'll know about it ahead of time. And when you arrive, you'll sign the paper and the tour directors will ask you um, to do these things. We are asking that our guests get a negative COVID test before they arrive. Now, many people will probably ask, well, what if I'm vaccinated? We are asking that our guests have a negative test before they arrive. And I mentioned that's today and for the near future. This will probably change in the next few months as more people start to get vaccinated. But at the moment, think about it. The CDC has not said that if you are vaccinated, you can't carry the disease. So if you were carrying the disease, and somebody wasn't vaccinated or some of the suppliers, the person that's waiting on you, uh, serving your lunch, hasn't been vaccinated, you could actually pass the disease on. So we don't wanna have that. We want everybody to get a negative test before they arrive on their trip. So that's what travel will look like at the moment. And we work with the best suppliers around the globe where sanitation has been, oh my God, on steroids, completely improved from what it was before, the great hotels that we stay in. The, um, many of the things have changed significantly, like our staff has been trained, the motor coach drivers, keeping the motor coaches clean, social distancing, going to a buffet, but instead of having you go up to the buffet, it would be served to you all kinds of different things to keep everybody as safe as we possibly can. In our 96 year history, we've had to pause one other time. We're a very strong company and we will continue to be a strong company, but this is the postcard that went out in 1942 we, when we had to pose, uh, pose, <laughs> pause for the second world war. So it basically says, the sooner we stamp out the axis of evil, the sooner we'll be able to stamp your name on a Tauk Tour ticket. And that was quite a pause, it really was. But we came back stronger and really almost a different company. And I'll mention that in just a moment. We have five brands today, and I'm mostly gonna talk about world discovery and family programs at the moment. So when we travel, um, in North America, we have trips all over North America, and we have quite a few in, in Canada too. 
Hopefully Canada will open up soon and we'll be able to run some of these land programs as well. But as you can see, we have them in the Canadian Rockies, that's in Western Canada, great trips in Eastern Canada and all over the American West, New England, the South. And I'm gonna to touch on each of these. I did wanna mention our history though. Back in the 50s, Tauk was, you know, coming out of the Second World War, pause, and Arthur Tauk Jr., who's the chairman of our board, um, went over to Germany and he was in the Air Force. And he came back and he said, Dad, who was running the company, he said, Dad, we need to think about using that new invention, the airplane. And his father thought that the airplane was a threat to us, a threat, and it was going to drive us out of business. Well, Arthur petitioned the airlines to be able to charter a plane to take our guests on a tour. And the airlines didn't want to have anything to do with it. It ended up in court. It ended up in the Supreme Court. And it's known as the Tauk case because we won the right to have a charter to take our guests on the very first chartered flight. We took them first to Halifax and then we were able to open up the West. Our guests who are predominantly from the East Coast because they could get to the start and end of a trip and get home by motor car or train, they were able to fly out to the West and go on a trip and it opened up the national parks. The national parks opened their doors for us to stay in their hotel. So we've been staying in their hotels for decades and they really do give us priority. We've had a longstanding relationship with the national parks. And in the 90s, you recognize uh, George and Laura. This is Robin Tauk and Arthur Tauk Jr., who's our chairman of the board. And they were honored with a Preservation of America Award for the work that we do within the national parks. And then of course, we celebrated the centennial in 2016 with our great itineraries and all kinds of celebrations, especially that year celebrating the National Park Service. When you travel on a Tauk journey, you might think, hmm, if you haven't been on one with us, you might not understand how much freedom you actually have. And, you know, we listen to our guests. I think the biggest barometer of how we're doing as a company is the comment cards that we get from our guests. Every single trip, we ask our guests to fill out this, this comment card. And there's several questions on there, but one question at the bottom says, based on this experience, would you travel with us again? In 2019, that number was 96.7. 96.7% of our guests said absolutely they would travel with us again based on the trip that they just had. That's across the board and average of the comment cards for 2019. It's always very, very similar, that number. Why do I mention this? Because listening to, to our guests is what we do. We evolve, we innovate based on their feedback. And one thing that they've said to us recently, you know, over the past few years is, we would like some more choices. We would like more trips um, of smaller groups. So that's what we're doing. We have so many smaller groups now. We've actually, now in, included private departures. If you have a group of 10 to 24, you can have your own trip. You don't have to um, be with other guests. Of course, you, you might make friends with other guests, but if you have your own, you have your own trip. It's exactly as is the same as it is in the brochure, uh, but it's just you and your friends or your family. And then the choice, the choice and flexibility. That means a lot of different days, you'll have a choice. Would you like to do the carriage ride or the walking tour? It's up to you. What do you feel like doing today? It's always included. We just wanna offer you those choices. So we have several national park itineraries as I was talking about, but why would you go with us? Because of our history, because of the time that we've spent in the park, because we have the space at those lodges that's so difficult to get and because of Ken Burns. If you're not familiar with Ken Burns, he's a filmmaker. He does documentaries. They're always on PBS. If you've seen the documentary on the national parks called America's Best Idea, it was a six part series. It took him, Ken and his partner, 10 years to produce this video, 10 years, think about it. They were in the parks all different seasons, different times of the day, different weather over this decade. And they really are such experts 
on the parks. They've introduced us to artists and ancestors of the people that you know were iconic in founding these places. And they collaborate with us on designing new itineraries and enhancing our existing ones because they're experts and they've done such research. Ken Burns doesn't have any other commercial venture. And when we came to him, it was less than a decade ago, when we went to him initially, he said, no, I don't do anything commercial commercially. I just do my documentaries. And um, then he looked more into the company and he realized that we actually do in travel, what he does in his documentaries. He has a documentary on jazz. He has a documentary on the Civil War. We tell the same stories. So he said, it's a symbiotic relationship that we can partner together. So this means when you book a trip that has Ken Burns' American Journeys on it, we are following the path that he has worked with our operations department to follow going on the back roads, going to see the arches for sunrise, all of these great things that we might not have thought of on our own, but also he's taped several videos for us on specific parts of each itinerary where he's talking to us about what we're going to see next. So it really does come full circle, staying within the parks, just where you wanna stay. So when you get up and have your coffee, you have the view of what you wanna see what you go there for. This is Ken Burns' favorite itinerary and it starts out with the arches as I mentioned. I love this trip. I think this year we it's going to be hard to get space on it because North America is uh, the phones are ringing off the hooks for North American trips at the moment but I will show you trips where we have a lot of space or some space at the moment. But why do I love this? Because look to see Capitol Reef National Park, he said there is no better way to see it than to fly over it to get the best perspective. He said the Grand Canyon, you can't imagine how immense it is until you fly over it. So again, we stay here. We stay at this hotel right on the north rim of the canyon. If you've been to the canyon, I wonder if you've been to the north rim. We go to the north rim for a very specific reason. You might know what it is because you've been to the south rim. And it's because only about 10% of the people that go to the Grand Canyon go to the North Rim. So that's why we go there, because we have it right in front of us. And it's amazing. And there's nobody around. You know, there are no, no groups, no hordes of people, no crowds. Uh, before COVID hit, I was lucky enough to go out to Grand Teton National Park in Jackson. And I just wanted to share a couple of these photos with you that I took. We have such amazing scenery right here in our own backyard that if you don't go to these places, you are actually missing something. So if you're looking to travel this year, I wanted to highlight a few different itineraries within North America. We expect to run all of our land programs within North America this year. We are waiting to hear when Europe is going to open, when Canada is going to open, you know, in the other places, Asia, Africa, Latin America, but we anticipate to run all of our North American trips. This is our number one trip. Canyonlands starts in Phoenix at the Four Seasons, ends in Vegas at the Four Seasons. We have all kinds of great sightseeing opportunities on this. A, a nice private cruise on Lake Powell, a float trip. We go to the Grand Canyon, Bryce Canyon, Zion, Lake Powell. You know what, you name it, you go there and it's just the best. The scenery, the stories that you learn about and to see these places and to wake up in the morning and to be in the parks, it really does. It gives you something that you just, you feel just really proud to be an American. Charleston Savannah, completely a different itinerary. And it gives us a view of the South, a small view that's focused on these beautiful cities, iconic cities, the Civil War history, and the food and the culture and how polite these people are in these places. You know, really, I have a friend that came from uh, Charleston and she said that if her mom went to a dinner party it was shame on her if she didn't have a thank you note in the mailbox on her way out. So yes, you can meet some really nice people on these trips too. Cape Cod, as I mentioned, I was a tour director. I used to run the Cape Cod itinerary and it's one of my favorites. Why? Because it's an eight day trip of these quaint little seaside places and 
the great seafood, the history of the whaling era, the weather in New England and how the shipwrecks have really shaped that area totally. Uh, the Gilded Age in Newport, cranberries as Mo Massachusetts most important crop. And why do I like this, especially with us? Why? Because we spend two nights on Martha's Vineyard. If you've ever been to the vineyard, I wonder if you stayed overnight. If you've been on a tour, you probably didn't. Why? Because there are no big chains on Martha's Vineyard. You're not going to find a Hilton or a Marriott or a Hyatt. Um, you're not even going to find like a Dairy Queen or even a Starbucks. They preserve the island's integrity and character by not letting these franchises in. But if you're running a tour, it's a little bit challenging to find space. Well, we've had space at the Harborview Hotel for decades. We've had a relationship with them, so we get to stay there. Where most other companies, they're going to stay in Hyannis. Then they're going to take a ferry to the vineyard and ferry back. That's a long time on the ferry instead of spending that time on the island. They're going to Nantucket. It's not called the faraway island for, for no other reason but the fact that it's far away. A long ferry ride to Nantucket and a long ferry ride to go back and sleep. With us, we spend our two nights, three days. When we leave the island, Martha's Vineyard, we fly and we spend the day on Nantucket, then we take the high-speed hydrofoil back to the mainland and continue our journey. So these are the reasons why you might think of Tauk and how we're different than the other companies out there. Hawaii, if you haven't done a land program in Hawaii, I strongly would encourage you. And this is coming from before Tauk, I worked on a cruise ship that sailed out of Honolulu, seven day cruises. We went to all the islands, all the main islands that we do here, but this is a land program. And why would I think about doing this land program, even though I've probably been to Maui 50 times, you know, every single Tuesday, we were in Lahaina on that cruise ship. Why? Because I was on the ship and I got off the ship with my bubble. And then I got, we did the, our sightseeing was the Volcanoes National Park or was going to a luau or whatever it was. Then we got back onto the ship with the same bubble. With us, we stay several nights in the same place. The locals, you're interacting with them every single day. They're serving your meals. They're cleaning your rooms. You have more time. You want to go out snorkeling. You have, you know, just go for a walk on the beach or, or maybe go shopping or whatever it is that you'd like to do. You have free time to do that, but you're more immersed and you have that beautiful Asian pan Pacific cuisine with papaya and pineapple and all those great infusions. And we do it right. We take you to a private dinner in the Alani Palace after hours. We take you on a, we do a private luau. We have a private sunset cruise. Um, we have all these great opportunities. We take in Maui, we go to this very renowned restaurant where the chef does a cooking demonstration. Of course, we get to eat everything that he's made. So, you know, we have that. We have all the sightseeing experiences, but we stay at the Pink Palace for three nights overlooking Diamond Head. You really feel like you're immersed in the destination. You don't have to think about your luggage and you go on to the next destination. So for me, it's more of an immersion if you spend more time there than just a few hours off of a cruise ship. If you really would rather just relax on the ship, you're not so interested in the destination, then by all means, take the cruise. But if you really want to learn about the destination, land is really a good way to go. Um, great trip. And we are running this very um, soon, New Orleans and Mississippi. And this, we spend uh, several nights in New Orleans. We stay at the Hotel Monteleone. We stay at the Nottaway Mansion. I'm gonna show you a picture of that in a moment. And we're also gonna stay at the Ritz in New Orleans. Trust me, you're staying at some of the best hotels and you're gonna learn all kinds of great things about, I did this trip years ago. We also have a brand new trip called Life on the Mississippi. So it's the same area but it's different because on this, we spend one night in Memphis at the Peabody Hotel, seven nights, eight days on the American Duchess, 166 guest riverboat on the Mississippi, and then two more nights in New Orleans at the brand new Four Seasons. And I remember when I did this itinerary, it was a talk trip, I'm from New England. They kept on talking about the war of Northern aggression. 
And I kept on thinking in my mind, hmm, I don't ever remember hearing about the War of Northern Aggression in, in college or high school or anything. It was a civil war, but in the South, there was nothing civil about it to them, you know? So we went to plantation homes. We went to Natchez, which was the wealthiest town during the cotton era. Uh, we go to Vicksburg on this. We see the battlefield at Vicksburg. So you're going to see wonderful things uh, on this trip with Civil War history and music because New Orleans known, is known for its jazz and Memphis is known for its blues. And you're going to see all kinds of, of great um, places like Sun Records where Elvis and, uh, and uh, Johnny Cash, they both uh, performed and recorded at Sun Records. We're going to take you into the Rock and Soul Museum, to the Civil War Museum, and on every trip that goes to New Orleans, the Preservation Hall does a great service for us. They let us in, just us, private performance. They don't do that with any other tour operator, but they do it with us. So the jazz, the blues, the music that you're gonna hear in Memphis, we have a city tour with a local musician, a professional musician. So you get the firsthand experience and the firsthand knowledge from the the local guides. And on the land tour, we stay here. We visit here, the Nottaway Mansion, which was the largest antebellum mansion um, during the Civil War. We stay here on the land program and we visit during the cruise. We also go to the New Orleans School of Cooking and we have a great demonstration that of course we do hands on and we get to eat it all. Always the best part. I also wanted to mention our programs that are for families. They're called Bridges and they're, the, the name Bridges came about because we wanted to bridge the generations, parents, grandparents, and kids. And I have to tell you that if you have the opportunity to do one of these trips, by all means, you won't regret it. I've done a few myself. So one of the hottest selling trips that we're doing this year is our Alaska program. It's a land program, so we can absolutely do this. I don't know if you're familiar, but it will be probably, um, it, it's, it's probably not gonna be a season for cruise ships to go to Alaska because the Canadians close their ports. So unless you're on a very small ship of 100 guests or less, you probably won't get to Alaska on a cruise ship. But we do the sightseeing and you get to see and do so much, and again, you're learning about the locals, which their lives are very, very different than ours in the lower 48. This trip starts out in Anchorage, and then we, we spend one night at the Captain Cook, and then we go up to Talkeetna. Talkeetna is a small town of about 500 people, and it's the landing. It's where uh, the people that climb Mount McKinley, that's where they stage right there before they, they, um, they take off. And we go from Talkeetna, we go to visit this um, dog sledding uh, grooming area where those dogs are all being trained to run the Iditarod. And that's a thousand mile race, a thousand miles. It's happening right now. And much, much of it is in the wilderness. And we get to meet a musher, a guy that's won the Iditarod several times. So it's really hands-on. Whether you're eight, or you're 80. This is a great trip because it shows you the land portion of Alaska. And we also, we fly over the foothills of Denali and we get to see those magnificent mountains. Going back to Anchorage, driving down to the Kenai Peninsula, which again, it's like heaven on earth. It's beautiful every step of the way. And when we go up to Girdwood, we take a cruise on Prince William Sound, which is about almost all day long. It's about five hours. So we might see whales. We're gonna see lots of glaciers and we're gonna take a railroad uh, train back to Girdwood. And we have all of those opportunities, which is what you would do on a cruise ship, only this is land. And we fly on a plane that has skis at the bottom. So we get to land in a pretty cool way. The hotels that we stay in are the best in Alaska. I look at this and I think about, I did a big ship to Alaska and this is just my personal experience, but I did that big ship and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking of how does that air smell? I want to sit there and just, and, and I want to walk on this road in the morning, maybe go for a hike and smell that air. I don't want to have to think about the thousand people at the buffet, you know, like I was on the cruise ship. 
I think land is probably better for me to do in Alaska and I need to do it even though I've done the big ship in Alaska. And to see the glaciers up close on a small boat instead of on the big boat, I would love, love, love to do that. Our bridges programs go all over the world. We have over 20 different itineraries. I took um, my nephew when he was graduating high school for a Canadian Rockies trip. And I chose, to, I chose to take him on this trip because it was more fun. We could have done a traditional Canadian Rockies itinerary because he turned 18 on the last day, but we did guided hikes almost every day. We got the fun card at Jasper where we got to we got to go out on the paddle boards and we got to play golf and we got to play tennis, all of those cool things. Day two, he told me it was the most beautiful place he'd ever been. And you know what? He was ordering venison and bison and all kinds of things off the menu that he never gets up in New England where he, he's from. And I felt so privileged because he lives up in New England. I live in Florida. We never spent much time together before this. I'd see him at Christmas or Thanksgiving, but we had a whole week together. And we had a week with my mom. My mom was not with us anymore. My mom who had was a single mom, raised five kids. She always had something that was on her mind, but on trips like this, she was totally relaxed. She was in the moment. And I think if any of us look at this picture, my, my brother and my nephew looked at this picture, they'd say, yeah, we'd want to crawl back into that picture because it was such a great trip. If you have the opportunity to take kids on a trip, I don't think you'll ever regret it. It's you're free and in the moment and you're just thinking about how much fun they're having and they have memories that'll last their lifetimes. I took these other two nephews, this kid and this kid on a river cruise. And my God, this was day four. They didn't know these kids before that they're still talking about that trip because it was so much fun. We all had a ball. So whether you're eight or 80, you can do one of these trips. If you like the itinerary, you really don't need to have kids if you don't want to go um, with kids, but they are really fun for kids. And, you know, I just realized after taking those kids, that time frame is so young when those kids are so short when those kids are young. If you have the opportunity, seize it if you can. I wanted to also mention a couple things for next year. I'm mentioning this specifically, this um, Swiss Highlands and Bavarian Alps itinerary, because next year is a year for two things that happen only once in a decade. That's Oberammergau and it's the Floriad. This is a land program that goes to Oberammergau, starts in Munich, and it's a wonderful itinerary. It's a land program. It's a seven night, eight day land program with scenery that's off the charts. And we spend a day at the Oberammergau, the Passion Play. And if you'd like to add on to this, you could do a river cruise before or after or something else in Europe. But this is one of the opportunities. If you'd like to do the Passion Play, it's not going to come around again until ooh, 2030. Wow. And then again, Floriad. What is Floriad? I'm not sure if everybody knows. It's an exhibition that comes along just once a decade. This will be the seventh installment. It's about 45 minutes from Amsterdam. Um, it's, it's um, this year, the focus is on a green city. And the place where it is, is 148 acres of reclaimed land. And everything is green. They've planted trees and flowers and, and they're doing the lasagna method of, pl of plants, meaning something is always in bloom, no matter when you go. We have four river cruise itineraries that will spend a day here. We get there before it opens. So you get to go in a little bit earlier than everybody else. There's pop-up entertainment. There's traditional entertainment. There are 40 pav pavilions of 40 different countries who are hosting their own green type of future. But this is very futuristic. They're building a city on this reclaimed land for a thousand residents. There will be no cars with gasoline, just electric vehicles, electric buses, boats, and trains. And they're gonna show you all kinds of cool things. It's very technologically advanced and interactive. So if you wanna learn how to make fabric out of a tomato plant, they're gonna show you. So uh, to me, it's one of those things like, you know, if you watch the Jetsons when you were a kid, it's one of those, it's futuristic, but you know what? 
this is the future. This will be a working town where people will thrive. And I think it will, you know, open up our minds to, to, to innovation, definitely. And I did want to mention the Canadian Rockies in Canada because we have some wonderful trips in Canada, which hopefully in the next few months will open up soon. One with Rocky Mountaineer, fabulous itinerary where we stay at the Fairmont Hotels, uh, Banff and Jasper and Lake Louise. And um, it's a very nice itinerary, great hotels. That's the Chateau Lake Louise. That's the lake. It's um, every time you turn around, I don't think you can get to see anything more beautiful. And the wildlife too is, oh, it's on steroids. It's really great. The Canadian capitals, another of my personal favorites. When I was a tour director, I ran this trip. This is the capital city of Canada. It's Ottawa, right on the Byward River. And it's, you know what, it is, we're staying. This is the parliament building. This is the hotel. So we're right here in the heart of everything. And it's just a great trip. It starts out in Toronto where we have our welcome dinner is either in the International Hockey Hall of Fame surrounded by all these Stanley Cups. It's after hours, so we're the only ones inside. Or it's at the Great Ontario Art Museum by Priceless Works of Art after hours. We go through the Thousand Islands and this is so picturesque. We have a private cruise. We go to see Niagara Falls and we, fear the, we feel the mist. In Montreal, we have a couple days, wonderful old Montreal. We eat our way through old Montreal. This incidentally is the church where Celine Dion was married. So that's a great trip too. And then lastly, this is new for next year. It's a new itinerary. It will happen in our national parks and it will be what we feel like is the winter, but it's really not winter to them. It's 70 and 80 degrees. And that's why we're going at this time because in Death Valley, it's known as the hottest time of the year. And uh, I mean, the hottest place on the planet is in Death Valley. So we stay at these great hotels and it's just, um, food for thought for the future. So I thank you all very, very much for your kind attention. Um, go to see our friends, the experts at Preferred Travel, and they'll take good care of you. And they're really invested in making sure that you have the best time and your vacation dreams tr truly become memorable.